of communion from Christchurch Villa Ricky this morning. I think you can see behind me that I've got a new rainbow picture, a rainbow heart painted for me by my granddaughter Georgia with a little bit of help from her mum I think because Georgia's only five years old. There's still no news on when um, our churches will be open so I think these services will continue like this for some time yet to come. Of course, we'll keep in touch with you and let you know if there is any more news. Today is the Sunday after the Ascension, which was on Thursday, or we celebrated it on Thursday. And so if you imagine as those disciples on that first Ascension day, watch Jesus disappear into the clouds. What were they thinking? Was he really going to come back? Was he going to fulfil the promise that he said he would return, he would never leave or forsake his disciples? And the rainbow is a wonderful reminder that God always keeps his promise. And as we know, the Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost, which we'll be celebrating next week. So this morning, as we remember the first Ascension Day, Let's just take a moment to be quiet as we begin our service. O God of earth and sky, as Jesus came among us in Bethlehem to raise us up to heaven, so today we recall his departing from us at Jerusalem to be in all places at all times. Though he his, is hidden from our sight, enable us to abide in him by the power and grace of the Holy Spirit 
until his mercy and grace fills your whole creation. Amen. We say together, Lord, direct our thoughts, teach us to pray, lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to our confession. It's wonderful that we can have this opportunity week by week to be cleansed of our sins, to say we're sorry to God for anything that we've said or done which we now regret. Let's just take a moment, shall we, to reflect on our week and think if there's anything we want to bring before the Lord this morning. God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for failing you by what we think and do and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the collect. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, Fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin <coughs> may know your forgiveness and your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we're going to have our Bible readings read for us by Marion Grant and then Sue Goldsmith will be preaching. Reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And our Gospel reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 17 
verses 1 to 11. Jesus prays for himself. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to be with you this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we are your people and we are blessed. Blessed to know you and to have you and to be part of you. Amen. Thank you for our reading, that was lovely. And our reading today is describing um, a solemn occasion. Jesus and the disciples are in the upstairs room. It's the night before his arrest. And Jesus knows all of this, if the prophecy is to be fulfilled. His crucifixion is inevitable. It's all reminded me a bit of what's going on at the moment. <clears throat> Having told the disciples that he's going away, John 16, 16, he says, in a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. The disciples are confused, worried, anxious. And it sounds familiar. Verse 16, 32 says, a time is coming, in fact has come, when you will be scattered each to your own home. That has a ring of familiarity about it as well. Jesus then prays for his disciples and in a time of great change, of great change. And for Jesus, a time of great certainty. He turns to the Father and just for them, just for the disciples, not for the whole world, he prays. Imagine that. Jesus praying just for you. Mind blown. But it reminds me of something I read somewhere that, and this is metaphorically, not literally. When God makes it rain on a particular field that needs watering, the rain often covers half the postcode. God's love is so bounteous and in Jesus' prayers for the disciples, we are included. We are his people. We are his disciples. At that last service we held in church, had we known what was really coming, 
had we even a, a, an inkling, a, a maybe, of how long we would be kept apart, maybe we would have taken longer to say our goodbyes, given each other an extra hug or held a hand a little longer. Or maybe in my role as church warden, I would have rattled my keys a little less vigorously. Jesus was well prepared. He spends that time working through, talking through, praying through what is coming with the disciples. And I am happy in my knowledge that like all God's people, I will see him. And I am waiting patiently. To be absolutely honest with you, it's the first time I've ever done anything patiently but it is something that I am waiting patiently for. However, I am waiting a lot less patiently to see all of you. So you better brace yourself because there's gonna be a, a big outpouring of hugs, I think, when we get back together. Jesus prayed that his disciples, as they were left in the world and without his physical protection, he prayed that the Holy Father would protect them. Christ always has kept his people. He still keeps his people. And he will keep his people forever. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, Sue. Now we're going to affirm our faith together. If you would like to, please stand. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Chris Davis is going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are eternal. We know that we can always turn to you for help and guidance. You protect us by day and night and will not let our feet stumble. We ask that you grant us peace and stillness in our hearts and minds as we come before you once again with our intercessions for all mankind. We are living in strange times, and yet we know there have been strange times throughout history. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus' disciples were full of hope during his ministry. Then their hopes were dashed as Jesus was crucified. Their hopes were raised again as they met with the risen Christ, but they must have been left in awe and amazement as they witnessed Jesus' ascension into heaven. But he didn't leave them alone, for he sent his Holy Spirit to watch over, empower and care for them and we have the Holy Spirit to watch over us today. In our strange times of lockdown and social distancing, the coronavirus seems to be receding, and yet we are still so very vulnerable to secondary spikes. Please help everyone in this country, and indeed throughout the whole world, to continue with the recommended safety measures as normal life slowly resumes. We pray for all the first line staff that have cared for and continue to care for coronavirus patients and for all those who are keeping the country moving in transport and retail. Please give comfort and peace to the families of those workers and to the families of all who have lost their lives to this horrible virus. We also pray for a medical breakthrough in the development in treatment of patients 
and vaccines to eradicate this virus totally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today would have been the end of Christian Aid Week, but with the current situation, Christchurch and I suspect many churches would not have been able to support with the normal fundraising and donations. We pray that Christian Aid are able to maintain the projects that they are working on and we can retrospectively send our donations. Last week was also National Marriage Week. We think of all those that had their wedding day planned and subsequently postponed due to the lockdown. We pray especially for our own Robin and Joseph and for all those couples who have had their wedding day plans disrupted and I ask you that you grant them peace and energy to resume the plans as soon as possible. Help them to get excited again about their special day. We also pray for home life in general. In this time of lockdown, some families have found themselves in crisis due to relationship difficulties and financial pressures. Please help them find ways to manage to cope with these difficult situations. We thank you for the technology that has allowed families to see and talk to each other via the virtual world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the school children looking to return to school. Logistically, it will be so hard for children and teachers to maintain the social distancing that will be so necessary. We pray that everyone, children, parents and teachers alike, can maintain the necessary guidelines on this. We pray also for the children's well-being as they return to a somewhat alien situation. Lord, we do earnestly pray that you would hasten the day when all these measures will be unnecessary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and Government. We ask for your blessing on our Queen and our Government as they seek to lead and govern this country through this massive crisis. They may have not got everything right, but let us not forget they are all only human, and like all humans, they make mistakes. We are fortunate to live in a country that is basically good, where peace is enjoyed, and where Christian values are still upheld. We do ask you, Lord, to help all in government, in this country and throughout the world, to seek the common good in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church family here and throughout our team. We thank you especially for Margaret, Peter, Sue, Val and Catherine for keeping Christchurch ticking over during the lockdown, for the creation of the virtual service and all necessary work in the office. Please bless them all and bring them joy in all they undertake on behalf of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those in our congregation who are suffering in body, mind or spirit or grieving the loss of a loved one. We especially think and pray for the families of Steve and Harold, Malcolm Fowler, David Potts, Dennis and Thora Hart, Richard Bush, Jim Sarah and Bob Clark, as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. We also bring our prayers before you for Mary Crocker, Sheila Mahoney, Frank and June Copper, and all in need of your healing touch. Let us spend a few moments before the Lord and name those personally to us needing prayer. Lord, we pray for all those named 
in words or in our hearts, that you would bring comfort and peace to those that mourn, healing to those that are sick, and joy in their hearts just to know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we thank you, Lord, you are, that you are always with us, sharing in the joys and sadness of us all. So, Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the peace. Christ is our peace. He offered up his life for us with a love beyond imagining with a love that dispels fear, with a love which holds and guides us through life's trials and joys. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us your love even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You made us all wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body given for you, do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death and risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. Amen. And so we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forget Give those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you 
and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our final worship song, which is Shine, Jesus Shine. to share with you again this morning on this Sunday after the Ascension. Please do continue to pray for one another, keep in touch with those who might be lonely and I do hope that you have a blessed week and a final blessing. 
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>